Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and today's tutorial is a takeoff from yesterday's testosterone tutorial. So check it out. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the alert button to find out when I do new videos. I'm putting together a um, winterizing series just so I can get my patients to get through the winter. If you're in Chicago, then you know that we all hunker down. We prepare for cold weather. It's kind of chilly now and usually hibernate until spring. And, and that's okay. I think that's uh, surviving the uh, elements of coldness and darkness. There's a small percentage of the population that doesn't do well when isolated. Either it gets too boring in the house or they don't have the resources to continue with outdoor activities or being active like they would in the summertime. It was okay in the summertime to take advantage of exercise, calisthenics, meaning push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups. But now that temperature drops to 40 degrees easily overnight and possibly 30, it's going to be a little bit uh, difficult to do that outdoor stuff. One of the keys of how I was able to enjoy wintertime was at the end of every winter season, REI or local stores, I'd go out and buy the end of season sale leftovers. And uh, you know, I've accumulated equipment, meaning uh, snowshoes, oh, there's a deer over there. Snowshoes, skis, uh, winterized clothes, so I can pull things out. And that's, you should see my garage, it's full of stuff. But it's just so, I will be able to be outdoors the majority of the year in Chicago, or I'll be able to lead expeditions and hikes throughout the different states and national parks. But if I do that, you really have to train all year round. And I think going back to where I talk about winterizing, if you only trained in the summertime and you're young, you could probably have some resiliency so that if you stop exercising, in October, November, and you restart in uh, March, you'll probably have resiliency where you can get past the two weeks of muscle soreness and then go ahead and pick up where you left off from before. But for those of us that are older, that will be a couple weeks of pain. And that's the usual thing is it hurts. And if you're not used to it, I'm gonna be crossing Golf Road here. So it's gonna be a little noisy. If you're not used to it, that setback of delayed onset muscle soreness can really screw up work. So if your work is dependent on uh, labor and you have aches and pains from your reintroduction or restart, that could be compromising to a full day of work. If we can all get through this cold, and not gain weight and maintain our level of fitness, then I think it'll be something different than the previous years. Uh, I think all of us do try when we're on a health kick, try to cut back on total calories per day to live in what's called a deficit. Caloric deficits are usually pretty decent when you're an average American mostly because the average American diet is chock full of extra stuff. I think most of us overeat. When you overeat, it's only a matter of time before you decrease your activities. And when you decrease your daily activities and you continue to overeat, that fuel's got to go somewhere. So when the body starts to decrease its activities, you don't burn anything up. And I think there is some validity to calories in, calories out. If you maintain the heavy three to 4,000 calories per day intake, you're going to gain weight. The body has to partition that fuel somewhere if you don't burn it up and you're in a sedentary life relatively compared to before. You're going to put that extra fuel into fat depots, love handles, tummy or belly fat, thighs, buttocks, arms. So it's important that you adjust it's called a periodization. When we 
train people, we like to throw in different types of exercises, different maneuvers and how to exercise because it keeps people engaged. It's exciting versus doing the same thing over and over again for years. So I think it is helpful to have variety. And sometimes if you have a limited sense of what to do, you might end up getting bored with your routine. There's a lot of YouTube videos and books that are out there at Barnes & Noble where you can investigate, find things that are novel, and apply them to your own workout routine. And there's great muscle signaling when you try something new or novel that inspires change and growth. That's why always changing up your routine or periodic changes will bring on muscle surges and growth. Well, I think you should also match the fuel intake to activities that you're challenging your body with. Make it easy, attainable. Do something really short burst activity in the house. When you go hibernating in the winter time, it's not to stop all activity. It's just to condense it so you can give your muscles a break. But not turn them off, still give them signaling. Make it exciting, make it easy to attain as far as goals per week, and hopefully come out of that rest period, that off season, ready to go, March with preseason. Now during that off season, it'd be cool to experiment with your fuel. If you were lean in the summertime, maintained with uh, say 1800 calories, then you might wanna change that up. You can throw in intermittent fasting. You can go more, not necessarily junk food, but liberate a little bit more caloric intake. Eat at your maintenance level. So let's talk about that real quick. Messing around with muscles and exercise, it can be interesting. As I mentioned, if you give the muscles something new, they will interpret that signal, if it's new, and adapt and usually grow. Well, the digestive system, I feel, and the metabolism will do the same. If you change up the way you take in the fuel, whether it's timing or total calories per day or macronutrients, I think that the metabolism will adapt to that. It might get a little bit more efficient and partition fuel properly versus the wrong signal. For example, everybody in during COVID 2020 stayed indoors, got stressed out, you watched TV, saw a lot of death, high stress response. So if you ate, even if you ate clean, if you ate during stress response or surrounded by stress response, it's like having caviar and prime rib, but also being whipped at the same time. That good food will do nothing if the hormones that are abounding during the meal are nothing but stress hormones. It's important to mess around or change up those meals every once in a while, just as important as changing up your activities. In this winterized four months, November, December, January, February, we can play around with activities. Then you can also play around with how you take in your fuel as far as the feeding timing, macronutrients. And I'll talk about more of that in the next coming weeks. But this is all just to introduce an idea and hopefully one of these darts will stick. But if you have your go-tos as far as a practice, a meal practice during the winter time that you rely on, please put them down below. to winterize you and get you bulletproof through the off season. My idea is to keep you active and engaged and also not to have you strain too much and maintain at that same speed that you invested for outdoor summer activities. So if we give you a break, which is that periodization for four months, it is to change up the intensity. If your summer activities included being outdoors, and running, hiking, cycling, swimming, or just being in nature therapy, uh, three to five days a week, that's cool. I would devote half of that to your usual, but condense it. 
So whatever cardiovascular fitness you participated in, just continue it. But remember, you're going indoors now, so just continue it, but compress it. I don't expect my patients to maintain their usual summer two hour a day routine indoors. I would just say truncate it to something that's tangible for indoor activity. So if you're on a treadmill, on a cycle, on a stair climber, then try to make it at least 15 to 30 minutes. I think that's fair. By usually 20 minutes, the brain figures out, oh, I haven't moved, I'm in the same room. Even if you have the fancy videos where you can have, you know, while you're on a treadmill or on the cycle or on the stair climber, you can have different scenes from different parts of the world. That's very engaging, but I'm pretty confident that your brain, your GPS will know that you haven't moved for the last 15 to 30 minutes. So in some cases, uh, boredom will set in and it'll be, I don't wanna do that anymore. If you keep it really short and sweet, you'll have a dopamine surge after you finish your task and it'll be easy to maintain. But the other half of your dedication for the usual summer activity will be put into power and strength. For those of you who have a routine of resistance exercise, then you know what to do. Resistance exercise machines, Jack LaLanne calisthenics, which might mean you have to go join a gym or uh, dust off all that equipment in your basement. Do it three to five days a week, but you do it at an introductory level, meaning that uh, you don't have to push 110%, but you use that first month of November to introduce muscle to what it hasn't tasted in a while. And when December, January comes about, which will be pure power and strength, you might taper off of that cardiovascular part and just go full bore power and strength for two months. I, I know that my cardio guys will probably not like that, but think of it this way. If you're a cyclist or a runner, you're going to be building up power and strength. You can modulate the way you do resistance exercise to have sustained cardiovascular tone. That's called HIT training or Tabata training, but you do it in a way that you stimulate resistance and power and strength. So I'll, I'll get into more details with future uh, videos, but that's essentially for December, January. Then as February comes around, then you transition away from power and strength back into cardiovascular so that March onward is all cardio. That's how I would play it. And I think it'll keep you engaged. It's a bit novel, but for the four months, instead of just being a couch potato, it's a transition into power. It doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna lose cardiovascular fitness, but you'll come out hopefully in spring with a different uh, endurance and different set of skills to apply to next time. Hopefully this helps. Give it a try. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you at the next video.